What did you underline while you were reading the article? Maddie. Um, there are three different Three classes or types. Raise your hand if you discussed these in previous school years. I'm pretty sure most of you did in your levers and pulleys uh, unit in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Right. Was that? Did that have a name? I don't know. I I realized it was a lever, but <laughs> did your teacher call it something specific? What else did you underline in your article, Cole? Effort, fulcrum, and load. And we're going to learn today how to use the word elf and some other hints to help you determine or help you remember which type of lever is which. Jose, name something you underlined in the article at the beginning. First page. Why not? Okay, if you didn't underline that, find where he just mentioned and underline that now. Ethan, tell us one more time where you find that. There's a section in the first paragraph called first class letters. Yep. And then where does it say? Like, give me a sentence. The first sentence. First sentence. First class levers, the effort, or the fulcrum is located between the effort and the load. Jenna, do you have that? Okay. That is a key piece of information. What else? Anything else from the front page, Jenna? Good. In levers, the effort is applied from at a different point. That means there's two places where there will be forces. Who supplies the effort force? Think back to the vocab scores we just did. Who supplies the effort force? Janessa. Us. This is the same as the input. You might want to write that down. Effort equals input force. Who supplies the load or the force at the load? What else would you call that? Cody? Uh, okay, it is the mass. Oh, sorry, I was going to help you out there, Michelle, but I don't have any lead. I got it. Okay. Uh, it is the mass. It's the object you're moving. What kind of force do we call that? It's not input. It's output. output force. So the load is going to be the same as the output force. All right, turn to the back page. Let's look at that. Turn to page two. Right here. What did you underline on page two, Roxanne? The force of load is to the fulcrum most effort you need to lift it. The closer the load is to the fulcrum, the less effort you need to lift it. When you lifted your teacher on that lever that you built, did you put your teacher close to the fulcrum or far away? Far away. Far away? No, close. Close to the fulcrum. We did both. Which way was easier? The when you were at the like, closer to the fulcrum. Yep. Did you lift... Like, was it a class you all got up and no, pushed down on the lever, or did you each in? Yeah, we did all that first. Okay, cool. Okay. And? Okay, so you all tried your own ideas to see, to see which worked the best, which was the easiest. Okay, good. Under second class levers, Tyler, tell me how to determine a second class lever. In this kind of lever, the load is between the fulcrum and the effort. If you didn't highlight that, please do so now. Key piece of information. Under second class levers, the load is between the fulcrum and the effort. It's under the title second class levers, kind of middle of the page, between the pictures. And it is the first <coughs> sentence. And under third class levers, Talon, how do you determine a third class lever? Uh, Say that one more time. Effort is between the fulcrum and the load. Very good. Okay, turn to your next page where you're going to take some notes.
under third class <coughs> lovers gym. Levers and pulleys and other types of simple machines have a long history. They've been around for a very long time, probably prehistoric. Did Mr. Shea tell you what prehistoric means? I bet he did. Before? before it's not before time. <laughs> no, it's not even before Christ. That's still part of history. Before history was written. That's it. Before history was written down. Prehistoric. So, ancient, ancient, ancient peoples. The Neanderthals. Not cavemen. That's not really what they're called. What? Okay. There's no data suggesting that dinosaurs and humans lived at the same time. But um, So, after dinosaurs, before history, people, early, 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 early people, probably used forms of these simple machines. Levers in particular were first described by Archimedes, ancient Greek. Didn't he make a screw? Yep, screw. yep he did. And he also told us the information that we know now about levers. All right, so the definition of a lever is a simple machine that makes work easier. It involves using or moving a load, which is the object, Around a pivot using force. What's another name for a pivot? A screw. Nope. Fulcrum. Yes, fulcrum. Okay, let's take a look at the first class lever. You have a picture, the same picture, on your notes paper. Why is the effort a hand? Why is the effort a guy? A hand. That's the thing, supplying the force, and if it's a hand, that means it comes from you or me. Uh, Bailey, we're on page five, and we're just about to start taking some notes. In a first-class lever, what's in the middle? Elijah. The fulcrum is in the middle. That is the biggest piece of information you need to know. Here's your hint. Write it down. The hint for first class lever, and I would write it right underneath that box for first class lever, so you know they go together. First fulcrum. If you can remember first fulcrum, you'll remember how to identify the uh, first class lever. Why is first fulcrum a hint? How does that help you remember, Maddie? Because um, the first class lever has the fulcrum in the middle. Yeah, but why is first fulcrum a hint? What's... F and F. Right, they both start with F. Any hint you use to help you remember something has to have some sort of trick to it. In this case, the trick is they both start with F. Think of first class levers that you've used. Think of something that might look like that picture. Before you tell me... I'm going to give you 30 seconds to discuss first class levers you've used in your life. Ready, set, go. A rocking chair. A rocking chair. A Okay. Uh, I heard some out there. First class levers. Cody. Seesaw. Good. What else? Um, Daniela. Scissors. Very good. Cody. I mean, Cole. <laughs> when you lifted your teacher on the board. Oh, rocking chair. That one is a lever, but that is a hard one to determine. I'll have to think about that one. Yeah, I think the rocking chair would have the load in the middle. Although the effort for that comes from your feet, so that one is really hard to figure out. 
Hmm. That one might... You, no, I, you could call that first class. We'll go with first class on that one. I have a question. I have an answer. Let's see if they match. Um, for second class, though, like, how would you learn something like that? I don't get it. Well, let's move on. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, second class levers. One more example. A crowbar. Very good. Let's move on to second class levers. Oh, oh what does that look like? Yeah, second class lever has the fulcrum at one end. The load is in between the fulcrum and the effort. Please write down your hint. Think second class elf. Second class elf. How do you spell the word elf? E-L-F. And what's in the middle of E-L-F? L L for load. Think second class elf. Write it up here. What? Whatever you're going to write, because we're going to do something else with the example oh, part. Okay. So whatever you, you write, just use it this spot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are you writing down your hints? Yeah. Good. Okay, what kind of levers can you think of that you've used that look like that? You have 30 seconds to discuss. Look at that picture. Does it not look like a wheelbarrow? You've got, let me switch colors here. You've got the wheel here. You've got the part where you put the dirt or whatever you're moving. And you've got the handles. What else? The wheel is where the triangle is. A shovel. Uh, no. A shovel is not. Daniela? Bottle opener. Depending on which end of the bottle opener you use, yes. Um, on the back of the hammer, you know how it has those two things? Uh-huh. You, like, use it and you, like, hammer and you, like, That is a lever, but that's not second class. Oh, yeah. A shadoof. Uh, also not second class. It's a shadoof. You'll see when we get there. You learned about it in history. All right, let's continue. A nutcracker. Yes. Okay, third class levers. Here's your hint. Write this down. Third class levers. Oh, sorry. The third class lever is the least efficient. Yesterday we talked about efficiency. Remember we said it was a percentage of how much work you put in compared to how much work you get out. The third class lever is the least efficient, meaning it has the lowest percentage. You have to put a lot of work in even though you don't get as much out. That doesn't mean we don't use it, though. Nope, the hint is 3E. It's okay, you can still write down it's the least efficient. You might just need to know that. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nod, nod. I said nod, nod. The hint for remembering third class lever is three rhymes with E. What's in the middle of a third class lever? Effort. Effort. E for effort. Not A for effort. E for effort. I don't know. Because people always say A for effort. Right. That's in there giving you a grade for how much effort you put in. Oh. Okay. Uh, Open your packet to... The second page where you were taking some notes, you wrote down your hints. <coughs> Under where it says examples. You don't need this stuff, let's get rid of it. <coughs> Under where it says examples, what I would like you to do is make three columns on your paper. The first column, your columns go up and down. First column, you are labeling first class. Second column, you're labeling third, second class. And third column, you're labeling third class. Yep. I'd like you to put the following 12 words into the correct category. Tell me what kind of lever each thing represents. 
So the first one is ice tongs. Number two is seesaw. Number three is stapler. Four is bottle opener. Five is nutcrackers. Six is the claw end of a hammer. Seven nail clippers. Eight scissors. Nine pliers. Ten fishing rod. Eleven tweezers. Twelve wheelbarrow. With the ice tongs. Tongs. Tongs, you know. Tongs. They can be used for a lot of things. Yes, you use them for ice. If you were correct. <laughs> hey, thanks. Yep. First class levers. What did you write down as first class levers? Nathan, Nathaniel, I mean. Well, what'd you write? Say again. Yeah. Seesaw. Okay. What else? Cole. Okay. Scissors. Scissors. Claw hammer. Claw hammer. Maddie Young, tell me one you wrote down that we didn't already mention. Wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. All right. Let's see if these folks were correct. Your first class levers from that list are the seesaw, the claw hammer, scissors, pliers, and nail clippers. All right, second class levers. What did you come up with? Wheelbarrow, ice tongs. That's it. Nutcracker. Here are the correct answers. A stapler, wheelbarrow, nutcracker, and bottle opener. These are second class levers. That means what's left as our third class levers? What are left as our third class levers? Go ahead. We have stapler under second class. Fix that. Ice tongue, tweezers. I think there's one more. Fishing rod. There you go. These are the third class levers that were in the list. How many of you got at least five correct in any list? At least five. Good. In order to get these correct, you have to think about where the effort fulcrum and load are actually located on that tool or machine. So the next step in the process in learning about first, second, and third class levers is to be able to identify where is the effort, where is the fulcrum, where is the load. So take a look up here. We're going to label some levers. I have here a picture of nail clippers. It's always easiest, at least for me, to start out with where is the effort located? Where do you apply the input force? Daniela, what do you mean the middle? Right, where you push it down, but it's, you don't push in the middle. You push here at the end. This is the effort, right? Where is the fulcrum or the pivot point on a pair of nail clippers? Cole? Right, right, where both right, right here is the fulcrum, where the top end meets the bottom end and where they pivot. And where is the load or where is the object where does the object go that you're trying to move, Elijah? Mm -hmm. 
So if you were actually using a pair of tweezers, or I mean a pair of nail clippers, what, what are you trying to move? What object are you trying to move? Your fingernail. And where do you put your fingernail? Left, right? On the left side. So this would be the load. Now you take a look. We have the L, and then we have the F, and then we have the E. What's in the middle? F. So if you remember your hint, Thomas, if F is in the middle, that stands for? Fulcrum, which is what kind of lever? First, second, or third? Is that a first, second, or third class lever? First, fulcrum. This is a first class lever because the fulcrum is in the middle. You with me? Okay. Let's look at our next slide. This is a pair of nutcrackers, and this is what it looks like when you actually use them. So Jenna, where do you apply the effort force? Where's the input? Down here? Where do you apply the effort? You said the bottom. No, on the other side. On the handles, right? Yeah. So you apply the effort in, whoops, two places. <coughs> here? And here, that's your effort. Yeah. Where is the fulcrum? Here. Yep. Okay. Where's the pivot point? Okay, down here where the nut is. This is the fulcrum. Where's the load? The object you're moving is you again. The nut. The nut. And where does that go? In between, right? Yeah. So if you look at these in order, E, L, F, what does that spell? Cole? Oh. And so what class of lever is it? Second. Second class. You are going to be doing this in just a moment. We have one more I want to go over. The last one is a bottle opener. Yes, I know this particular bottle opener looks like it's also a thumb drive. I don't know why, but it is. If you're using this bottle opener, where is the effort fulcrum and load? Danielle, where is the effort on this bottle opener? I don't know what middle means. Well, where is that exactly? I don't think middle is what you want to tell me. At the end, say it again. At the end of the bottom. At the end of the bottom. Left or right, guys? <laughs> Left side, okay. The left side, this is the effort. This is where you put your hand, right, in order to use this bottle opener. Jenna, where is the fulcrum or the pivot point? Um, what end? Uh, right. The end. Right end. At the right end, right here? Where it touches the bottle cap? Wait, where are you? Okay, that is the fulcrum, where the bottle opener touches the bottle cap. Cassidy, where is the load? Where does the bottle opener actually do work on another object? It is between the E and F, and specifically, it's right here where that little part that sticks out on the bottle opener pushes up on the bottle cap. So that's the load. So what kind of um, lever is a bottle opener? Second class. It goes E, L, F. It can also go F, L, E, but what you have to remember is what's in the middle. 
Any questions?